I wish I had a bright and shiny message for you this Christmas Eve, but I'm afraid um, the Lord is, is truly suffering, and the message is far from being cheerful. He was very present to me tonight in worship, and we spent a long, long time together. And as I had told you about a few days ago, I set my computer's music list on shuffle, thus allowing the Holy Spirit to lead as to which songs to play when. The Lord's love inflamed my heart until I could hardly bear to be in his presence. And I know that when he strengthens me like that, that means there's a trial coming. I noticed he was wearing black slack, formal shoes, and a white shirt with pleats and a black bow tie. Then I also saw him in a full tux. I'll never be able to communicate the tenderness and glory that he imparted to me today. And I just want to tell you that anything the Lord does with me is also for you because I am merely one of his thousands of brides and queens. And he wants you to know the kind of treatment that you're going to get when he takes you into his home in heaven. So he shares it with me. He gives me a glimpse of what's going to happen ahead of time so I can tell you what to expect. There's nothing special about me. The only thing special about me is the Lord, and he's with you too, and that makes you just as special. So um, when I read these things to you, I want you to understand these are only for your edification because you're going to be doing these things with him. So he gave me a beautiful red velvet royal cape with ermine trim, and we walked down this long aisle to the throne. He danced with me and holding me so tenderly. He was wearing his ermine-trimmed red velvet cape and gold crown. And then he placed a gold crown on my head also, a very ornate one, and said a perfect fit. And we lingered there together, forehead to forehead. And now the Lord is sobbing. He began, Oh, how I dread what I must do. Oh, how I dread it. All of humanity will be in shock and totally disoriented. All but the most remote to answer your unspoken thought, my love. I was thinking of those who live in the wilderness and don't ever get any news. Uh, and they're far away from the influence of people. He continued, This moment that must come to pass the glory of having you in my presence forever must first be preceded by this horrendous trial upon the earth. No, it shall not come nigh your dwelling, but the terror and confusion all over the world will be inescapable. My sorrow and mourning for the lost, this will hang heavy upon the earth like a thick, dark mantle of agony. Tormented souls who cry out as their blood is shed will cover the earth with their sobs, with no one to comfort them as many descend into hell. And my bride, what shall she do? She shall behold the consequences of what has been done to ravage the earth. But then she shall accompany me into glory where every tear will be blotted out, where we will celebrate her homecoming. But before that moment, I must suffer my passion all over again, clear. Remembering these moments in the garden when all was revealed to me, what I was about to suffer for, the physical suffering was and never could be comparable to the mental emotional anguish of those screaming and crying out for mercy. Yet mercy will be denied them because the hour of mercy has vanished. The time has come when my mercy must be swallowed up in judgment. And oh, how bitter that is for me. I wrapped my arms around the Lord and held him tightly, hoping to bring him comfort. Only a little drop and truly a vast ocean of misery, and he wept bitterly. My very little part was to hold him, almost as if I were holding him upright because he was slumped over me. 
in utter despondency. Yet I will have my way with this world, he continued. Yes, suffering will abound, but glory will follow. Once the earth is purified, it will rise again out of the ashes, and those who inhabit it will be trained in the ways of holiness from sea to sea. Yet that kernel of evil must be forever purged from the earth, and for that reason I will allow the earth a time of rest. Here he's referring to the thousand-year reign. And for those who are hell-bent, I will give them time to rise up again until the purification is complete. Yes, the second time of purifying will bring forth the evil and corrupt seeds of Satan once and for all to be destroyed and stripped of their influence. And you shall stand by my side and behold it with your own eyes, my Claire. Yes, the time is coming when evil shall no longer have a voice. Oh, the mysteries to be revealed. So many mysteries. And you will come to understand all things. No longer will you have any question. Rather, you will be fully enlightened as to the why of everything. Do not despair. You've been strengthened. Stand strong. This is your time of vindication. It is at hand. No longer will they say, Where is your God? No, rather, This is your God? The mighty and powerful one? No wonder you love him. Yet they will not understand my love. Be prepared. Be strengthened. It is coming.